Welcome to the Gospel Liberty Podcast. Thank you for joining us for another episode. Resurrection happiness. There is a day coming up in which the church uh, usually celebrates the uh, Easter, Mm -hmm. the resurrection. Uh, We, you know, personally in our family, we follow the biblical model of celebrating the resurrection every Lord's Day, Mm -hmm. but we don't see anything wrong, of course, with uh, designating certain special days where you focus on something a little more than than usual. So um, it's Easter Sunday coming up, the the church calls it, and this uh, Sunday it falls on March 31st. And we'll still celebrate Oh, yeah. No, no, (laughs) exactly, exactly. Yeah. So I'm reading this book by John Frame, one of my all-time favorite authors, one of our family's all-time favorite authors, and Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's a book called On Theology. It's just a collection of his shorter writings. He's a chapter in there called Resurrection Joy, and he tells a story of when he saw this movie called Risen. Apparently, it came out a couple of years ago. I think I'd heard a little bit about it. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, I think it was produced by Christians. It was about basically the resurrection of Christ. We don't really watch a lot of Jesus-type films um, because uh, that's a longer discussion, you know, getting into the Second Commandment and proper use of of uh, imagery in uh, in visuals, and uh, I'm not saying that it's sinful. So you know, we, we can go down that road in another direction. Yeah, That's not the point of another, this here, no, just kidding. right? Right, exactly. <laughs> but basically, in this movie, Frame describes that there's this scene where, uh, well, it, it follows the, the a Roman soldier who uh, ends up confessing Christ as Lord and mm-hmm. who gets saved as he investigates the the resurrection. And in one of the scenes, apparently, this Roman soldier interviews a disciple of Jesus after the resurrection. And the disciple of Jesus, whose name is Bartholomew in the movie, is just extremely happy to the point where a couple reviewers called him giddy, said, oh, he was giddy. And they were saying it was cheesy and inappropriate and unacceptable. Uh, because it didn't have solemnity, it didn't have reverence, it didn't have, hmm. um, it didn't have that that seriousness. And Frame goes on to say how sad that is that mm-hmm. these uh, reviewers were framing it that way. Because if you think about the situation, there is no amount of happiness and joy and excitement that could capture what really must have been going on for those initial disciples who literally saw Jesus Christ Mm -hmm. get tortured and murdered and bear the wrath of God on the cross. And they were, had their full hope in him that he was the savior. Mm -hmm. And then to see him come back to life, to see him rise from the dead and that everything he said was true, that he truly is the Messiah, that he really is making all things new, that uh, he really does have the power over death that he mm-hmm. defeats Satan and sin and that he was raised for our justification, that there's no amount of joy uh, that you could capture that would express uh, what we really should be feeling about the uh, amazingness of that event. Oh, a- amen. I mean, I, I feel like just the amount of excitement really would be just incredible just to, it's almost like oh it, it's it's proof you know yes. like it, it's the 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 truth is coming to fruition mm-hmm. and look at what is happening and just like that wonderful feeling of yeah just like oh it's actually all happening and yes. you know not any bit of denial or wondering or questioning but just like the full on truth mm-hmm. being displayed in in Christ resurrecting Amen. Um, yeah i mean how can you not you know be just extremely overjoyed um and happy yeah. in, you know like he's describing yeah and and you can think of certain events in life mm-hmm. um that you know sometimes we've experienced and other you know generations have experienced and you can think about the joy, the happiness that comes from the, those moments. You think about like uh, when World War II was officially over mm. and the soldiers who had been gone for so long and mm-hmm. had seen so many people die and now all of a sudden the war is over. Mm-hmm. And if you just you know talk to someone the same day that the, that the Japanese surrendered, you talk to someone in, in the U.S. Army, <laughs> excuse me, or the folks back home in Times Square or whatever, and if they weren't you know, jumping up and down and smiling and waving banners, you would think that is very strange because 
you should be extremely happy because you just fought off tyranny and oppression mm-hmm. uh, of the Japanese and the Nazis and, you know, uh, freedom triumphed. And that's amazing. Uh, praise God. What amazing news. Or if you have cancer mm-hmm. and then you, you know, at stage four cancer and you were given a couple months to live and then you uh, went through this battle and you just got the news that now you're cancer free. Mm-hmm. You know, what is your response going to be? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, yeah, obviously massive amounts of joy. I mean, in one sense, it's it, it would be strange if people weren't expressing their emotions in joy because it seems like oh are you do you just not get it or like is it not do you not believe it or like it's just like something just is is off I guess and I I, but I also think and I wonder you know oh the stoics you know and all the people with different personality types and just how they might respond with their joy versus maybe they are you know massively overjoyed about something but they aren't showing it externally I mean what about that or what do you think it should be external or I don't I mean it's so interesting to think about because yeah I think that you and I might express our joy in an extremely outward, you know, and I think a lot of other people, oh, yeah, the war is done or, you know, look at the resurrection or whatever it may be. But not everyone expresses that joy mm-hmm. in that in that way, right? C- certainly not everyone expresses joy in the exact same way. So and expresses happiness in the exact same way. So we mm-hmm. can't be legalists and say, oh, this person isn't, you know, expressing something externally in the exact way that I think. Mm-hmm. Therefore... This person, you know, has a doesn't have a, a the proper understanding of it, but there is a sense where it must come out externally. And you see in the scriptures, you see commands like "shout for joy," for yes. example, yes. or you see in Luke six, "rejoice in that day and leap for joy." Mm-hmm. So it, there seems to be a connection that the, the biblical authors that the Lord Himself is making between mm-hmm. feeling joy. And expressing it externally, mm-hmm. yeah, Shouting I mean, he rejoiced for, exceedingly with great yes. joy, and that's that seems like a pretty extreme expression. Yes, not just like oh, okay, yay, great. Yes, all right, okay, what a, that's a great thing, right? You know, it, exactly. Um, and so, so when you think about you know something that's even better than a war, an amazingly brutal war mm-hmm. ending, or you winning your battle with cancer or whatever it is, you finally getting pregnant after five years of, of trying and trying and trying. These amazingly joyful experiences, those are extremely joyful. I'm not downplaying those by any means whatsoever. Mm-hmm. But how much more amazing <laughs> is the Son of God triumphing mm-hmm. over Satan, sin, and death, Amen. reversing the curse, making all things new, and uh, starting the new creation mm-hmm. and promising that someday every tear will be wiped away, that mm-hmm. death doesn't have the, the last say, mm-hmm. that even if you die, you're going to be resurrected from the dead. You're going to follow the the one, uh, the Christ who was at the first fruits of our resurrection. You're going to follow him mm-hmm. into his glorious resurrection someday. That type of uh, event, that type of proof, like you said before, that type of foretaste of what's to come, and this uh, validation that Christ is true, that he really is the way, the truth, and the life, mm-hmm. that he really did forgive our sins, that he really has brought us to God, mm-hmm. will bring you such amazing excitement if you really taste it, not only know it in your head, but when you taste it in your heart. Oh, amen. That's going to cause you uh, to express yourself externally in a way that is absolutely incredible if you're actually thinking mm-hmm. about it. No, yes. I, yeah, I mean... 100%. So, so when we think about the resurrection, uh, Frame says here, he says, I've always been more most attracted to those forms of Christianity that take joy seriously. Hmm. There are denominations, congregations, and traditions that seem to have more in common with the Roman arrogance than with Christian joy. They seem always to be afraid that someone might find them to be wrong about something. They seem more eager to take vengeance against those who disagree than to seek common ground. But I came to believe in Christ and a youth fellowship where jokes and good feelings abounded. The goal was not to punish the bad kids, but to draw them into a happy friendship, a group of merry men. Christ was the center of everything, but he was the Christ I later recognized in Risen, the the movie that he's talking about, Mm -hmm. not the Christ of the theological warriors. Mm. 
So that's something that we all have to consider deeply when we think about Christ and when we think about his resurrection. Does it, is it immediately just something that we, oh, just this fact that we know or something that we have to prove to other people to prove mm-hmm. him wrong? Or is it making us deeply happy to, to the point where we are expressing it, where nothing can get us down ultimately? Of course, I'm not saying we don't have sorrows in this life. We certainly have sorrows in this life. Mm-hmm. In this world, you will have tribulation, but take heart. I have overcome the world, Jesus said. Mm. So we know that even if we get horrible news about our health, for example, well, it's not ultimate Mm. because even though we experience these real and serious and painful difficulties and our health deteriorates and we have broken relationships Mm -hmm. and we have struggles with our jobs or whatever it is, Jesus is making all things new. Amen. And in the end, he makes everything sad uh, right Mm-hmm. He reverses the, the the curse. He's in process of doing it right now, and it will be finally consummated uh, when he returns mm-hmm. at, at the, the last day. No, amen. I mean, it's such a it's such a real thing. You know, it's 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 real. The resurrection did happen, and it's a real thing, and it actually applies to our life. Yes. You know, every day, and we can be aware of it, and excited about it, and thankful for it, and um, and yeah, I mean, exactly, and and it can. We can, we can be reminded of the resurrection in all those, you know, examples that you just gave yes. of all those challenging heartaches and all the, you know, challenges of everyday life that we go through. And we can be, oh, you know, praise Christ, you know, that yes. he, that he rose from the grave Amen. and, um, it's not just some joke or some, you know, Oh, one thing you celebrate once a year. Okay. Yay. Happy Easter. Right. You know, but it's, it's it should a, inform the totality of your yes, entire life. Yes. Whenever yeah. anything is, you know, difficult in your life, you, we, ex, we all experience the curse mm-hmm. all the time because we're in the already not yet uh, stage of redemption right now. Yes. Christ has already began the new creation, but mm-hmm. it's not yet fully here. Mm-hmm. And the effects of the curse still remain as Jesus puts all of his enemies under his feet. And we're, we have a lot of difficulties in this life, mm. but we know where things are going. And yes. we know that Jesus, even right now, is winning victories in this world. He's saving individual sinners. Mm-hmm. He's transforming uh, marriages and families and uh, how people parent. And he's helping people to uh, think through education uh, in a biblical way and to bring redemption to to politics Mm -hmm. and to art and to decor and fashion and to athletics. And there's so much hope and joy in the resurrection that we as Christians shouldn't just enter into worship services, for example, not only on Easter Sunday, but every single Lord's Day Mm -hmm. with sour faces. Mm -hmm. No, the resurrection means happiness. That's what the resurrection means. We know the end. You know, we know that we know the end of the story. You know, we know what's going to happen. Just like if you're starting a movie and if you already know what's going to happen at the end, you feel oh, okay, a little bit of like a burden lifted, yes. you know, rather than going in and, oh, what's going to happen and anticipation and whatever. Um, but I, yeah, we know what's going to happen. Amen. And, <laughs> and, 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 and that's so true. We not only know what's going to happen, that's certainly true at the end, but we know what the resurrection means right now, which is that there's always hope for individuals right now. Yes. No matter how horrible, you know, your uh, sister's marriages or your brother's marriage or your uh, your son and his current walk with the Lord and how he's wayward or no matter how uh, dire the uh, your relationship is with your parents or your neighbors or how horrible your job is or whatever it is, there's hope right now in Christ mm-hmm. to be satisfied in Christ first and foremost. Mm-hmm. And also there's hope uh, uh, for your own soul to uh, grow in Christ and to be sanctified. Mm -hmm. And there's hope for change. There's Mm -hmm. hope for change in society. There's hope for change in politics. There's hope for change, uh, uh, positive change in all of these things because Christ is alive. And then like you Mm -hmm. said, certainly uh, the best news of all is that we know in the end when things are uh, fully consummated, mm. that the entire new earth is glorified, mm-hmm. the in, uh, the finished, the completed new heavens and new earth. So we should be happy. Mm-hmm. We should be rejoicing. We should yes. be walking around uh, with smiling faces, knowing that Christ is no longer in the mm-hmm. tomb, but that he is alive Amen. and living in light of that truth every day of our life. When we get that uh, uh, challenging news, well, we know Christ is alive and the resurrection is coming. 
And uh, in that day, there will be no weeping Hmm. for those who trust in Christ. Mm -hmm. For those who do not trust in Christ, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, so Mm -hmm. sadly, as Jesus himself said. Uh, But for those who are trusting in Christ, and there is nothing but joy, Mm. infinite joy in the presence of Christ forever. So if you are listening to this and you haven't trusted in Christ alone for your salvation, uh, no works of yours whatsoever, but Christ alone, the one who lived perfectly, the one who died as as a substitute on the cross to take the wrath of God and who rose from the dead in glory and is right now seated at the right hand of God in all power (laughs) and who has all authority. If you haven't trusted in him, then trust him right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, Trust him, treasure him, and joyfully obey him from a changed heart. And that is what will bring you the greatest joy, is knowing the resurrected Christ. Not only knowing it intellectually, knowing these these, uh, facts, but tasting the implications of what Jesus has done. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Gospel Liberty Podcast.